Hi, my name is Stan Targos. I'm one of the founders of Responsible College Advocates, and I'm here with Daisy Cordero, who's been in financial aid at higher education for over 20 years. Daisy, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you, Stan. As you've been in, in working with colleges and families and parents for, for quite a while, what are some of the things that you absolutely love about working in financial aid and seeing kids and families go through the college process? One of the things that I love about my job is to see the bright, happy young people coming in with full expectations of leaving the institution with an education that could be useful to them. And I just love working with families. Is your heart's in the right place, and, and I love your passion because you do stand up for the families. When I've seen you talk about financial aid and admissions and living on campus and supplementing and reducing the cost, that's truly what you're passionate about, putting the family at the center of the solution. What are some of the obstacles that families have, or why would a family start the process and not complete it? Some of the obstacles, there are, actually there are many, but um, one of the biggest ones is that families are not thoroughly informed when they go to um, send their children to college. Number one. Number two, the financial aid process is a difficult one. And um, many families are afraid of the process itself. The universities are helpful, but they don't have the staff to be able to meet with every family member or, or with a family group and to explain the process. They may touch just the surface of the financial aid process at the beginning, but the end of this journey is not even talked uh, you know, about, it's not even discussed with, with the families. So when a family comes in and they're all excited and gung-ho, they've just gone through high school, they're excited, they're starting this journey, they get into the process and then they start getting loans and then a panic sets in. That's one of the biggest burdens that I've seen and I work with many universities and a lot of families uh, across the country actually. And, and I know here you work with thousands of families. How does the university, what options does a university have to help a student and a family if they come across a financial burden or a pain point or a struggle? Usually we, depending on what the struggle is, the government has checks and balances. Uh, for instance, now during this time of, of the pandemic, um, the government has allowed the financial aid offices to have something called special circumstances where parents or students have lost their job due to the pandemic. So there is some things that the universities can do. Other things have been, um, we have allowed the students to apply for more free money or grants. Um, we, we also counseled the students um, now via Zoom when we were at the university is you know face to face. But we never truly, truly give them a full plan to not repeat this circumstance again. And that's where I think the problem lies. Sure. So in the last 20 or 25 years that you've been working in financial aid, helping families and students, there's a lot of traditional solutions that come along that might charge a student or a family a fee for coaching or consulting or uh, origination fee to refinance or bundle a loan. I don't view those as the real solutions. I view those as solving a symptom. When Responsible College Advocates was working with some of the students at your university, what was it that you liked about our process that helped solve the problem or created a solution? I loved the fact that you brought in the human element, meaning you met with these students you were um, engaged and they were engaged with you. They listened to what you had to say, even if it was just in passing during one of the programs. But they did not forget. They would come back to me and ask me for your phone numbers again and information because of your engaging manner. The entire, your entire staff that was there did that. And every single person engaged the student. In other words, they paid attention to these people. And that was, to me, that was so important because they never forgot you humanized a process that's pretty cold and harsh. Sure. And they, they, they enjoyed that. They liked that a lot. What I loved at, at the universities, I thought the students and the parents would come up just for the chips, the oranges, and the chocolates. But they, we had over 50% of the people, and there was over 1,000 people who came through that actually requested time with us 
letting us know that they were hungry for a solution and the time to customize the plan. They were super grateful that the university engaged a community resource as a complimentary benefit to help them solve their next problem. The first problem was getting through school and graduating, and your university is tough. The second problem is how do you pay for it? If you were to think about some of the benefits of working with responsible college advocates from a um, attrition or even on the front end from students matriculating all the way through or eliminating some of the burdens of the default rate for financial aid, do you see any side benefits to letting the students have a custom strategy to help them navigate that process? You know, Stan, I do. And I have to, I have to be real sincere here. I am biased to your program because in 24 years, I've vetted many, many, many programs going through many meetings in libraries because, you know, they have offered us gold at the end of the, you know, the, the rainbow, but there's nothing there. So when I read about your program, read about what you guys do, I thought, you know, this would be the only program that would work, at least in my institution, where you would take each family one by one and explain why it was important to go through the process knowing the pitfalls of the financial aid process. And there are pitfalls. Your support, your knowledge, your research into education is amazing, which would benefit not only the families, but the entire institution. My institution will, it'll be a win-win with, with a program like this. And I've seen you in action talking to some of the students. You know, we had the event at, at my institution. And I can see that that, that capsule of time that I saw at times 10 for our institution would be amazing. And to have advocates informed and really caring about families, that's a win-win for not only my institution, for any institution. What I, what I really appreciate is we meet in, in the metro Detroit area, there's the gamut of very low income and then very wealthy people. And regardless of their uh, income and their education going into the process, they all struggle with the same thing. And financial fluency is one. How do you pay for the debts after college? How many debts and loans do you need to take? How do you make the process affordable? And what I love about your university and you specifically is you bring everyone to the table and say, listen and learn. When they get their game plan and they get their roadmap and their customized strategy, we average, uh, for someone who graduates with an undergraduate degree, we average cutting their time in half to get out of the student loans without the burden of sacrificing their lifestyle. And even in the Metro Detroit area, sometimes the job market's challenging. We're able to help even those social work students who are passionate about their careers, but they're only gonna make 25 to 35,000 a year, still solve that problem. What I love is you're giving uh, the students and the parents an opportunity to have a solution that's knowledge-based, that's organic, that doesn't cost them anything. I think you said, they have to pay for the education. They shouldn't have to pay to get out of the loans on the back end, That's right. which is powerful. That's right. What would you What would you say to a university who's struggling through this time to have money to give scholarships, gifts, and grants, as well as keep their fixed expenses, their staff, and their employees in, in on board? What would you say to a university who's looking to extend a resource to their students like ours that doesn't cost the university a dime, doesn't cost the parents a dime, has a national nonprofit supporting it, and is a resource that they can give? I would strongly recommend, because I can't make them do it. If I could, I would, that they would definitely uh, work with your program because you, again, it's a holistic program. It's an organic program, but it's also holistic. You're not just looking at one facet of the students. That's what universities do. We do financial literacy. It doesn't really mean a lot when you're talking to 18-year-olds who are thinking they're going to be living forever and that they'll pay it later. Right. It doesn't work very well, but we do it. We do it with, um, we're very good at offering financial literacy. But you know what, Stan? We don't know if this is working because we've never asked the students 
five years from the day that they heard our first financial literacy event or, or presentation, how has this helped your life? In particular, to pay that huge loan debt that you're carrying, you're carrying the diploma in one hand and the debt in the other hand. And I'm afraid if you put them in the balance, the debt is way heavier right. than that diploma. So I would strongly recommend that at least let the students meet with your advocates to explain everything from A to Z and don't wait until after graduation. Do it at the beginning, the middle, and the end. Right. It has to be a check at every single point. So when a university has a new student come on board as a freshman, they get a counselor that walks with them for four years to make sure they're on track to graduate with the right classes, with the right degree, to get into the right college at the university, and then have success. We're that extension after they graduate. We walk with that student until their last loan is paid off. And we're able to track those numbers and get back a compliant way of getting information back to the university to say you average 5.2 years to eliminate all the undergrad debt, 6.3 years, whatever the number is for the university so you can track it. Do you think one of the metrics that a university is going to use for recruiting moving forward is time to graduate and time in debt? Actually, the time to graduate, you know, they've extended that to six years now. They don't even talk about that. Right. Stan, they don't. And this is why your program is so important. They don't even touch that because they think if they talk about the final debt, it's going to be the kiss of death, really. Right. And the students won't come to, to a particular university because you're kidding me with the truth. Your program, the education advocate, um, uh, your program does this with such finesse and so well done. That's what they need. They don't need us doing something that we are. we don't have the time to do. Right. We don't have the staff to do it. We would love to do it, but we don't have the training or the time to research anything. Your organization does. That's the beauty of being a community resource. We can be a complimentary benefit, no cost, and we can give everyone the custom strategy they need. And when you look at the debt, 27000 38000 for undergrad or 103000 for graduate if they need it, it's a mountain that you can't overcome if you don't have a plan. But if you have a plan and a strategy, it's just a speed bump, and it doesn't have to derail their ability to retire, to have a family, to get their kids through college, to retire peacefully, to take care of their unfunded health care, to support their family, friends, to pursue passion, projects, and hobbies. They get to enjoy life. They're defined by the education they receive, not by the debt they carry. That's one of the mantras that we beat on a daily basis. Daisy, my last question is, what would you tell a family who has the opportunity to engage in, in the responsible college advocate process? I would definitely, I wouldn't even tell them, I would push them if I could to meet with one of your staff members and to learn as much as they can about the process of attending, starting college, finishing college without all this debt. And if they have to borrow, at least know how to get rid of the debt once they have graduated. I would encourage them. I would say, listen, this is a way, not maybe not the only way, but it is an excellent way to make sure that your children and your family, because it's going to, the debt of the student affects the entire family stand. And if you want to avoid that, then I would strongly recommend that you consider um, meeting with, with, you know, one of your staff members to, to, be part of the program. It's the only way. We've tried everything. We've had programs stand. I can't even, I don't even remember in 24 years. None of them worked. And I believe that your objective here is to help the students and the families to understand that the beginning when they start school and the end are very close. And somewhere they're going to meet. You have to pay back right. what you borrowed. And so the way your organization does this is amazing. It's remarkable. It's humane, just to say the least. So I would, like I said, I wouldn't tell them. I would push them. This is what you need to do. That's what I love about you. <laughs> you care about the families. You care about the institution. But your heart's really with the students and the parents. And you recognize the struggle. And you want them to have success and move forward in life. And 
I'm grateful for the opportunity. I love the families that we get to meet. They're all quality people. They care about everything that they've done, their education, their knowledge. They want to give back. They want to be productive members of society. So we're grateful for the opportunity to be a community resource. We're grateful for your help and your support. God bless you, Daisy. God bless you, too. Thank you. Thanks.